Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today, I'm gonna to show you how I did this gear background or painting, I don't know what you wanna call it. Um, I don't really think it's a complete painting because it's it's more of a background, but I didn't really know what else I wanted to do to it and I kinda of lost my uh, motivation to finish it, so it's kind of in the pile of finished later paintings. But I thought the background was really interesting and I got a lot of requests to uh, film this. So I figured I would just share what I have so far. And if I ever do anything else to it, I'll let you know. So I began by setting some stencils onto some mixed media paper. I've got the 140 pound Hana Mule Bamboo Mixed Media Paper. And the stencils are from Blick.com. They are the Rollco stencils. And I got a big set for 12 bucks. So I'll link that down below if you're interested. They are large. So if you're gonna do this for a card, you could use some of the smaller stencils in the kit, or you could use, I know Crafters Workshop and probably some other brands have some uh, stencils that are just like a, like a collection of gears all in one stencil that would work really well for a card. So just kind of scale it to whatever project you want to do. Something like this would be a great background, would be uh, wrapping paper, um, a good start if you want to, you know, just get something grungy going on for you know, a paint to paint on top of. Now I started off with my airbrush, but one thing I realized is that the air from the airbrush was too much and it kept pushing my stencils off of the paper. Also, what I didn't realize is I didn't clean it very well the last time I used it. So I had a little bit of ink on the tip of the needle and it was preventing it from spraying well, uh, which I did clean it later and got it working. But um, you're gonna see, I didn't use the airbrush too much for this particular painting, but I did get some black and some kind of purpley plum Dr. P.H. Martin radio Radiance inks. Now I like the radiance on an airbrush because they're finer. They don't have the pigments in them. They're more of a dye-based color, and they will um, they will go through the airbrush much more uh, reliably. Although it doesn't look like it in this video. So I decided to go another way with this piece and I went and got my Tim Holtz Distress Oxide Sprays. I figured they're kind of grungy looking anyway and the color families would look good with this and I could just get some use out of a product that I bought and I quite frankly didn't like very much. So um, I'm just using, um, I've used some like grays, some browns, some greens. I'm trying to get kind of like a patina, rusty old uh, grungy effect. I'm also using a toothbrush with some uh, Dr. P.H. Martin's ink to spray over it to um, get some more vibrant colors because the Tim Holtz Distress Oxides are more opaque and muted. I figured the, doc the Dr. P.H. Martin Radiance would be a nice contrast. And I'm flipping over the stencils to basically stamp the ink that was on top of the stencils down to give it a nice grungy effect. I dried it and then... Um, I think I went out to play pickleball or something. And then I came back and started, you know, adding some more to it. And I think I might have added a few sprays with a camera off, uh, like shut off, because honestly, at that point, I'm like, there's no saving this. I'm not going to make a tutorial out of it. But then after giving my eyes a break, which is what I recommend, always take a break and come back. So it's not as bad as you think. I thought, I know I'm going to use my Derwent Graffiton pan paints because they just have this beautiful texture. They're muted. The um, That uh, kind of autumn brown color is just such a uh, rusty looking color. So I use some of that. I use some of the metallic paint pan paints from Derwent because they're all very muted. And I knew they would just give it that subtle, like old metal sparkle, like that just a little, you know, you can see a little bit of shimmer from uh, where the metal is still metallic and then you get the rust and the texture. I just knew that that would work really well. The other nice thing about these two products is both the metallic and the, um, and the graphitin is that they do have a little bit of actual texture to them. So if I paint them down, I'll be able to go over them with some colored pencils and that will actually help the colored pencils grab the paper a little bit more. The, um, the Hana Mule Mixed Media Bamboo Paper is, it's got a soft, I would say it's kind of like a soft press. It's not as textured as like a cold press, but it's not hot press either. So it does help to have a little bit more grit there if you're gonna do some colored pencils on top, which you'll see me do that in a little bit. Um, also, just that difference of, um, of sheen in the media helps it stand out. So even though everything is pretty much mid-range, there isn't a lot of, there's a little bit of highlight, but, but that's gonna get covered up. Um, there's not a really dark dark here because the Distress Oxide sprays are muted and they're all, they're kind of more mid-range because of the white that's in the white pigment that's in those sprays. They don't have really, really deep darks. 
So having that little bit of sheen that the graphite and the metallic have in them, it's just um, it's just going to help break them from the background a little bit. That's one thing I did struggle with with this background as I was doing it. And one of the reasons that I was kind of hesitant to post the video is that I just didn't really feel like it was very successful. Um, I felt like I was in that kind of mid-range zone for so long that uh, it was kind of frustrating to work on and it was frustrating to watch back. And, um, and I, the thoughts that I had for finishing this painting after we get to the point where we'll get to at the end of this video, I thought about maybe um, collaging some like, um, not newsprint, but maybe like old book pages, maybe do some stenciling, some like, you know, stenciling like big numbers or just something really industrial looking and just kind of make it like a industrial abstract piece but I'm, I'm not sure I'm just kind of like I think um I'm the type of person that if, if I'm not like totally loving it then I just want to kind of bail on it um so yeah I kind of lost my oomph on this I think it's because I was doing this in part as part of like Inktober and I was just I don't know, you're doing something every day and you just want to kind of move onward. And that's kind of how I felt. But I did go in with my Derwent drawing pencils. Now they are a muted range of color, but their black is really black and their white is really white and they're very opaque. Um, and they're also quite soft. So going over this piece with those, I think really helped it, especially getting the shadows in with the black because everything is, as you can see, now that it's dry, you can really see how muted everything is and how mid-tone everything is. And I was finding that to be just be very frustrating. I'm using some of this kind of yellow ochre color. I think it might be called wheat to highlight some areas. I'm just kind of scumbling on the side of the lead to catch the texture from both the paint and what texture is left on the paper. And just basically try to brighten up the gears enough so they are brought out away from the background. I also like some of the texture in the background though, so it's not like I want to just go over that with dark everywhere. There's some really pretty um, kind of like um, speckling in the background that I really like the look of. And so it's kind of like I want to keep some of those textural elements, but I also need to get some contrast and some other things like that. I grabbed a few random pencils from my... Um, um, a pencil rack that sits to the left of me in my studio. There's some Prismacolor, there's some Holbein, there's some um, budget brands. And I have those handy because they're all wax based and they're all a little bit more opaque. And I find that when I need to zhuzh something up or correct something or just, um, you know, fix an edge or whatnot, having a wax based pencil handy is really great. Now you can see that now that I put the stencils back down that I totally um, moved around some of the little teeth on the stencil, but it doesn't really matter too much. I figured this would help me bring in a little bit more uniformity. I want things to be a little bit rust, uh, rustic and wonky, but I do want it to look like gears. I did change some of the insides of the gears if I thought they didn't look quite the way I wanted them to. Um, and that's what you can do. You can use stencils as a guide, use them as a way to like get some texture, get some pattern going, and then you can go off and do your own thing. And there's no need to reinvent the wheel, so to speak, every single time you go and do something. And um, I did feel a little weird about using a stencil on an Inktober project, but um, I... I was a little pressed for time. I actually did spend like an hour and a half on this on this background essentially. So I guess I didn't, with all the little snips of time put together that I worked on this. Um, so I guess I didn't really save any time. I could have just done a painting. But um, I was really into experimenting with these different products. Here I'm using a, uh, I think this is another Derwent product. This is a uh, India ink filled pen. I'm not sure if they still sell this. This was in a uh, art subscription box that I got a few years ago. Um, I have so many of my pens are from like the smart art boxes uh, because they're, you know, you just get to try different things you might not think about picking up. I do like the black ink here and I do think this is the original ink. I did take one, I did use up one of my ink filled pens and I refilled it with Blick Black Cat India ink, which that's a really great ink. It's a, um, it goes a long way. It's very affordable. I used to use it in my studio a lot with my students. In fact, I'm still using the same 16 ounce bottle I bought back in the late nineties. Uh, it's a great product and I uh, highly recommend that too, especially if you're a teacher. I think they sell it in smaller containers so you don't have to get a humongous bottle love it, but it wasn't very expensive. So um, I'll try to remember to link up to that too. 
There's, um, but you know what? Just look in your stash. You probably have something. If you have some sort of black ink, it should work fine. Um, if you think you want to go over it with other products, you might want to make sure it's a waterproof ink just so it doesn't um, reactivate on you. And here I'm just kind of flicking on some water because this is uh, the product, the spray ink that I used, the Tim Holtz Distress Oxide Ink. It's water reactive. And it, when you spray it and you let it set for a minute, same thing with their Distress Inks you can, uh, it'll basically lift up or it will bring the white pigment up to the surface and then you can blot it and lift it off. Um, it just gives it an interesting texture, although where you've put your colored pencil, it's going to resist. So, and if you've put the black India ink over it and it's dried, that will resist too. So you just want to kind of keep that in mind and maybe plan when you spray uh, before you put your pencil down. But I wasn't sure I wanted to do that until I had got to that point. Now, this is my favorite uh, gouache at the moment. However, it's no longer available, this particular set. But the um, the set that, that that came from, Artsy, they released a like a 45 set or 40 set, a honkin set. And I did find, and it says Anagani on it, and I found that to be very comparable to this and nice and opaque, and it's actually more affordable than the Maya Himi gouache. So um, unfortunately, it's a humongous palette. So if you don't want that big, you know, that big footprint, um, you know, that's probably not the, the one for you. But I do like the convenience of this, and I like the quality of this gouache, and I've been using it for uh, maybe two years and it's held up really well. It hasn't dried out on me. And as you can see, I've used up a lot of the, uh, the paint there and it's just, it's, there's a lot of paint in those jelly cup sets. They're 50, 30, is it 15, 15 or 30, 30 mLs, I believe in each of those cups, which is twice as big as your typical tube of gouache you would buy at the store. So very affordable, lasts a long time. And, um, you know, I'm not really worried about light fastness on this piece because I started off with, um, the Dr. Peach Martin's Radiance inks and Distress Oxide sprays. And I don't think either of those are light fast. So this is just kind of for fun. Um, I don't really know what I'm going to do with it. That's another reason I really didn't want to finish it because I'm like, eh, it's going to, if I hang it, if I love it and I hang it, it's probably going to fade. So I was just kind of like, this was a fun, just little um, experiment to do. If I was going to do it again and I really wanted it to be light fast, I would probably use um maybe bombay india ink since that is light fast and um go on from there probably but i don't know if i want to do this because it was fun um i think i would use, use this technique on greeting cards and uh, scrapbook pages art journal pages stuff like that where i could close it in a book and not worry about light fastness and just use up my tim holtz spray inks but um yeah i, I probably wouldn't do this in a painting like this. I don't know. I know. I'm telling you, this is a tutorial. Here's how to do it. Would I do it again? No. I've, I've been there, done that, got the t-shirt. <laughs> Isn't that terrible? It's actually fun. I People like the way it turned out, so that's why I'm doing the tutorial here. I enjoyed working on it. I kind of I d did it in a lot of little, you know, um, fits and starts. So it did give me a chance to kind of give my eyes a break and um, come back and look at it and you know, kind of see it progress. I think here where I'm adding the gouache in to highlight, I think that really helps a lot. That in the addition of the ink for the shadows helped a lot. Um, I don't know if I necessarily needed the color pencil. I think if my paper was, was more textured or if I gave it like a coat of clear gesso, um, then I could have gone on with the colored pencils and I wouldn't have had to use the gouache. So I feel like a lot of the things I did in this piece were a little bit redundant and unnecessary. So Keep that in mind. If you're doing this at home, you can skip some of the steps and, you know, be just fine. Here, I wanted the look of like drippy rust. So I am just adding in some really, really uh, drippy gouache and just adding water and letting it kind of run a little bit. Um, so actually, this is, this is the orientation the painting is meant to go in because it's dripping down like that. But um, obviously, it's turned in the thumbnail because I want it to, you know, fill the screen a little bit better so people can see the detail a little bit more. But this is what I was intending anyway. Um, but honestly, I don't know what I'm going to end up doing with this. Probably nothing. It's probably going to sit in my pile of <laughs> misfit paintings <laughs> till the end of time. Uh, I'm going in with a black gouache to give it some really strong contrast in the shadows. I really think this helps a lot. So when you're not happy with a painting, you you probably have an issue with your values, how light and dark things are. Your highlights might, you might need highlights. You may need shadows. Usually people need shadows. Highlights are I like the sprinkles on the cupcake. They're easy to do. There's not a lot of risk because you're just putting little bits there. But, um, 
oftentimes when I see problems with a painting, it's it's a lack of the deep darks. And that's one reason when I'm painting, I generally get my darks in first because I find that um, that you can be brave if you're early on in a painting because you don't have anything to lose. So hey, it was fun, it was experimental, I hope you give it a try, and I hope you enjoyed it, because, um, you know, art is meant to be enjoyed. There's a picture of where it is at this moment in time, and thanks for watching. Please give me a thumbs up before you go, and until next time, happy crafting!